Okay, we're back. Um, I hope you watched the first part. It was a very quick overview of Canva. Very, It's pretty intuitive. It's pretty easy. But like I said, there's some times where you want to do something different. You don't want to use the stock one. You want to create your own images. You want to create your own layouts, everything. So what do you do? So we're going to go into... Um, I always use Facebook posts. We're going to do an Instagram post. As you can see, the last one's still up here. So if you want to do your own and don't want to do anything that they have to offer, which is fine, I do it quite often, um, what you do is you go under Elements, click Red, and then you usually click the first one, which is the full screen. You can do what like, frames, anything you want in here. Um, they have tons of them, so whatever you want to do. But I usually stick to this one. So once I do that, I go to the Uploads. I'll drag in the Bellagio. This is the Bellagio fountain from, actually, from Paris, on top of the Eiffel Tower in Vegas. So here's your image. So what do you do? How do you add text? These ways to, you can add heading, subheading, but that can be tedious and you may not get what you want. So they have a whole set of predetermined text already, which is great because you don't have to do anything. It's right there. You can change it once it's in. I'll usually put something in and I'll change the font sometimes because it just isn't what I'm looking for. But they have a ton of free ones down through here. And you can get colors, um, which are the same as the one above, but I usually get the black black and white ones just because it's easier. So, um, so if you just click it, it'll add it in here. Um, as you can see, um, you can resize it by dragging it, which is a great feature. So say if you want only a little or a big, you can just grab it. Um, so let's type in something here. So let's do... Bellagio Oops. Fountain Show. And then we'll put this city. Um, Las Vegas. So, so there you go. And you can, in here, you can change the color of different rows. You don't have to keep them all the same color with these. They're all separate, they're all different. The only ones that will have to stay the same are like the block ones down below. So, so we'll change it to white because it's a little hard to see. So we'll make it smaller and stick it in the water. So there you go. But say you want it bigger. All right, I'll show you bigger. So say so you want it covering everything up here. And notice it's hard to read. The Bellagio up here sort of gets lost and the Las Vegas Nevada definitely gets lost. So say you change it to black. Oops. So the black gets lost as well. See, it shows up a little bit better, but it gets lost over here. The same thing probably happens over here. The Las Vegas, it's a little easier to read, but not great. So what do you do in these situations? They don't currently have an outline against everything. It's pretty much one color or a separate color. And sometimes you don't want to use a bright yellow or something that will show up. So what do you do? So let's change it all back to black. And one of the tricks I've discovered is if you go to Elements, Shapes, you get a text box and you drag it. Um, and then you just send it back so it's behind it. Change it to white. Um, so that looks better. You can read it. But you're going, yeah, but I can't see the picture. So how do we fix that? So let me align this up a little bit better. Granted, they have these really great tools in here like that. It'll show you exactly when you're centered. So 
if you go down to transparency, you can, oops, this will happen every so often and it annoys me. It'll jump around the screen, but if you make it smaller or bigger, it'll change it. So you drag the transparency down to like 30 is a good number, 33, anywhere in there. So it blocks out the picture just enough to read the text. Um, it looks really good. Um, at least I think it does. Some people may not like it, but just know you're going to cover some of the text, but it's a good way to get your text shown and it's sort of highlighted a little bit better than what Canva does. But what if you don't want to put a box behind it? You have such a great picture. You don't want to put a box behind it. Well, there's a way, oops, there's a way to do that as well. So we'll delete our box. Just click it and hit delete. I'll click our picture. So what we're going to do, let's go into transparency for the picture. And you'll just drag it down. Usually 70, 80% works pretty well. So you can still see the picture pretty well and you'll see the text. So that's a great way to actually get in and uh, have a great picture and not lose any of it. So that's my two little tricks that I do. Um, you can also go in and change the colors. You can change every letter color if you want to, but I would not recommend that. It'll take forever. Um, I really wish they had put an outline feature or a shadow, which currently isn't on here, but they're adding new features all the time, so hopefully it'll come. Um, one other feature that is not in this version, but it's in the at work version, is it'll automatically resize your pictures for different social media or different accounts. So if you did say you did this one for Instagram and you want it for Facebook, it would automatically resize it for Facebook, keep everything the same. And then if you want it for Twitter, it resize it and so on. So that's available and I'm going to hopefully bring you guys a video on it. Um, but this is really an easy way to get pictures done uh, without having to go through like all the different layouts. Um, and make it really difficult uh, to get exactly what you want. Um, I'm trying to think what else is advanced in here. Um, like I said, you have a ton of stuff to look for. Backgrounds, which I haven't used much, but they're in here. So if you wanna, the best way to use these is if you're gonna use a frame, um, a grid, and you want something in between, a background will show up. Um, Trying to think what else do I do that is sort of more advanced for you guys. Um, but you can do your own text. So you can add in text. You can change the text. Um, you can upload your own. Uh, I believe that's a network feature. Uh, but you can, they have a ton of fonts in here. You really don't need to upload any unless you have specific ones for your organization. Um, so you can always change it change the size of anything. Even up here, you can usually change the size. If you're in a preset one, it won't let you sometimes, but here you can change it super easy. Um, you can change your color. Uh, picking a color is a little wonky at times. Um, it's best if you know the hexagonal code you need from the web. It's way easier. So if you know it, you can go ahead and put it in. Um, I've struggled sometimes to find the exact right shade I wanted. So I would suggest going to a color chart somewhere on the web, finding the color and just, then just putting it in. Um, so if you're going to do that, um, and then if you have something you want to delete, just delete it. Click the delete button, but text space. Oh, here we go. This one. So say you're working on something and you space it out. And the letter spacing is sort of like this. You'll see designs like that and you change it like with a different font or different something. You can change the spacing to meet exactly what you want. You don't have to go in and have the presets. That's one good thing about them. And you can also change the height. So if you want a row further apart or closer together, super easy to do. Um, it's a feature I discovered just one day when I was like, oh, this looks terrible. So, and then you have your um, different spacing links. I've never used link, but you can import it, input a link. So, 
but I've never actually used it. So those are the up the things I do. Here's the, like undo. You can go back and rechange everything. Um, and it'll automatically save all your designs. You don't have to worry about saving. I think I failed to mention that in the other one. But when you work on something, it'll save. And then if it's a really large image, like you're doing something for print, it'll take it a minute. So it'll freeze up a little bit. Um, uploading your own pictures is super easy. Just click upload. If you're tied into Facebook, you can go directly into your Facebook pictures and pull. Um, i trying to think if there's anything else. Those are the main things I wanted to go over. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial. Um, I'm going to have more as we go. I hope you guys get in and play with it. Um, I will be talking to Canva about actually getting a demo of at work for you guys. So you can see the difference. It's a paid uh, platform as opposed to this free version. So you pay, I think it's $12 a month. Uh, I think you get a lot more images. You get a bunch of different stuff, resizing, like colors and logos, and they're already saved. So there's a lot of advantages to it, especially if you're a small business or someone on your own that does a lot of graphics and need it for blogging or something. It may actually be worth purchasing for the year. Um, but yeah, that's, that's Advanced Canva. Um, I'm trying to keep these really short, not too long like some of the other ones. So if I rush through things, feel free to reach out to me on social at timgoldman.com, uh, T-I-M-G-O-L-E-M-A-N. Uh, post a comment on Marketing Elements blog here, and then I'll get that and I can answer it because I'll uh, have your email in the back end so you don't have to worry about it being posted, and I can get back to you. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I'm definitely going to have a lot more videos coming up soon. I'm going to do some more app videos, and I hope you guys have a great one, and I will talk to you very soon.